click with www.lawmakerguitars.com. Whoa, you ever seen one of these before? I know I hadn't. This is a 1967 Hilo Model 3903X Bazaar. Now this is a bison style guitar, which means it's got these big horns that are kind of stubby on it. Uh, and uh, they, they were uh, formed after the, the, the bison guitars uh, that everybody was doing back in the 60s. And uh, this one is outstanding. I have not seen anything so clean in my life. Everything is here, including the whammy bar and the, uh, the bridge cover and the case and uh, everything is here. It just, it's an incredibly clean guitar and it's a blast to play. Uh, the single coil pickups, I'll be going through those in just a minute to tell you about them, uh, but they are outstanding. Now, this guitar is made by Hishino Gaki. Now, Hishino Gaki actually wasn't one of the uh, longest running uh, uh, guitar factories. He was one of the first Ibanez uh, makers. Uh, and then they went on and they did some Reco guitars, some Tulio guitars, some Antorias. I know you've all seen some Antorias out there. And of course, some Crowns. Now, so those are all very higher end made in Japan guitars. And those were made by Hishino Gaki. Uh, and uh, the high lows were also made by Hishino. Now, uh, everything on here is absolutely original. I'm just looking at these tuners. I mean, these things are so nice. They're the individual tuners. Uh, I didn't even have to take them off and clean them. I mean, those things are in gorgeous shape. Bridge cover is original. Knobs are original. Whammy bar is original. The string tension rod is original. The high-low logo, raised metal logo, original. Nut, frets, uh, pickups, uh, screws. I mean, we didn't have to replace a single screw on this guitar. Uh, everything was original on it, and it's just in incredible, incredible shape. Now, let's talk about these pickups. These are single coil pickups, and they just sound awesome. So many of the Japanese guitars, I mean, you know, you have to be careful. Not all those single coil pickups sound good. I mean, some of them sound amazing, and these are some of the amazing ones. Some of them sound not so great. Uh, I mean, you know, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're looking for some nasty garage band thing, I mean, you know, yeah, you can deal with some lousy uh, um, uh, made in Japan pickups and crank them up and put a pedal in front of them. These you don't have to do anything. I mean these things just sound fantastic. <laughs> now I'm on the neck pickup. Now how this is set up, you have three individual volume controls so you can turn on all three of your pickups together and then adjust your sound by uh, adjusting the volume of either your middle, your back, or your front pickup to give you just exactly the sound you're looking for. So it's almost like a blend feature on this. And then instead of a tone knob, they have uh, a, a tone switch. Ooh, rhythm. is the neck pickup. Let's go to the middle pickup. Oh, that's cool. Then the back pickup. Ooh, that sounds good. the back and the middle, add them all together. Turn the front one down a little bit. Here's the front.
front and back, just the two of them together. Responsive whammy on this too. It's got a, a, a spring on it that looks like it might even be like the same size as a Bixby, which I thought it might be kind of stiff. Not stiff at all. Now these whammy bars on these 60s guitars guys are not dive bombers, okay? These are not like the modern ones today. You can't just dive bomb these. And the way they work is if you're using it, you just give it a little tap back up again and it resets it back to where it's supposed to be. guitar. This thing is, I mean, it's as clean as it can be. I mean, it looks like it came uh, right out of the showroom, just the way it sits. I mean, it's just incredibly clean guitar. Bridge cover, I can't get over it. Those bridge covers are always missing. Now, that would be enough to just have this guitar be all original with every single screw from the day the thing was built. However, what do you see this? Check this out. Now, if we didn't have this case, trust me, it would be impossible to find the right case for that guitar. This is the molded case that came with that guitar. I couldn't believe it when I got it. You open this up and it's like, holy moly, look at this. It's got this nice rust color uh, felt in there. There's a little bit of damage at the butt end, probably from pushing the thing in. And the neck restraint strap, we, we had it reattached on the bottom and then the top part uh, broke loose. It's just basically a piece of uh, material that you can refix. But look at here, the accessory box is still here. Every single one of the latches is here. The hinge is on here. And check this out, Bakelite handle. <laughs> Bakelite, okay? I mean, it's just impossible that this uh, original handle would be on here. The case is absolutely as nice as the guitar. I mean, I didn't even mention the frets. I mean, the frets on the guitar, I mean, I think someone bought the guitar for a child and maybe it got put away in a, in a closet and just, they never played it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's that nice. And when you look at this case, you say, you know, it's been, it's lived its life somewhere in a dark corner or in a, a, a closet or something. I mean, I was just shocked and so happy this guitar and case is going to make someone really, really happy. Uh, I'm so happy we found this for our customers. Uh, be the lucky one that gets it. You get this incredible case for that 1967 Hilo bizarre guitar, and uh, someone is going to be really excited when they get it. So check it in all of our really cool guitars out this week at www.lawmanguitars.com. We really appreciate you watching our videos.